My friend Belle is making a lot of bad boy choices 2020. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> I have some things to say. My friend here, Serafina, isn't being very supportive Whoa. of anything I do. <laughs> she doesn't trust me. So it's been a pretty crazy weird year, but we were pretty lucky in that we started dating right before this. And we live March in New York 6th, City. Yeah. <laughs> and we've had each other this whole time and it's been an incredible year to be stuck with someone. And fortunately we were people that we enjoyed being stuck together with. Uh, so here we are hanging together for the holidays. Um, we're very excited for 2021 to get a lot better in a lot of different ways. She's yep. a pediatric ICU doctor. So we saw a lot of really, really tough things in New York all through the spring um, and took care of, though I'm a pediatrician, we took care of a lot of adults with COVID for months in our pediatric ICUs. Um, had a lot of loved ones that we lost both to COVID and not, you know, just not being able to be with family in the ways we typically can has been hard, but it's been so nice to have someone to take a little load off of the year. <laughs> and chilly, refreshing Sarasota. Uh, my name is Mark Sadaka. I'm a get to be, I get to be a homeless pastor here taking care of our homeless for the last 20 years. And um, our homeless are so thankful. They have such an attitude of gratitude. And uh, we got to feed about 300 at the Salvation Army a couple of weeks ago. And it was just a beautiful day. We had the vice mayor there and the congressman the senators there, the police department. Um, our homeless have a rough time, especially when it turns cold because during the day it's warm, but at night it gets very cold, so they have to carry around two sets of clothing and hygiene supplies, blankets. Um, so they're under great duress. It's a, it's a hard thing being homeless. And uh, they, they flock here because, you know, it's such a great place. There's plenty of supplies and people that care and take care of them. But uh, so many amazing stories of our homeless. Jay! Love you, man. Love you. Merry Christmas. Love you. Merry Christmas. And... Uh, what we want to do is we want to be hopium dealers. We want to deal in hope. And hope means hold on, pain ends. And uh, if you have, we are our brother's keeper, so it's better to give than to receive. That's when you're blessed to be a blessing. So if you have, go share with somebody else. Be blessed, especially in the Christmas season, going into a new year, into 2021. So God bless and peace out. She was working there and she was always so loving to me when I would, I would just come in there in tears. I was gone, been going through a uh, breakup this year and ending a relationship and it's hard and, and I was in tears uh, much of the time when I would go out shopping to buy food just to feel good and she was always there for me and she would always come up and talk to me or give me a, 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 an oil or a tincture or something to lift my spirits and that's how I met my my best friend Lori now. Her name's Lori. She's such a doll, such a sweetheart. She and her husband live here and uh, we just have to remember to reach out to people. We don't know what people are going through. You don't know what people are feeling or, or what they're going through and she reached out to me and now we're best friends. Yeah. So... that is urgent and the most, my mo most needed thing to do is to get to a particular part of Africa. And for years I've been planning to sail there, sail to Europe and then row a boat to Morocco across the Gibraltar Strait and then make my way to Ethiopia, Eritrea, 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 they people say it all different ways. It used to be part of Ethiopia. I have 
strongly called to that part of the world. I know for a fact my roots are there um, because I'm from Washington, D.C., which has the highest concentration of people from that part of the world um, outside of Ethiopia and Eritrea. And that's actually the birthplace of coffee, and um, many believe that's where actual humans began. And I personally feel deeply connected because I've known people from that part of the world for so long, maybe 30 years, and they are the people who have been the most kind to me, the people who seem to um, understand me first and best. Well, hi there. What are you giving out? You're giving out peppers? Yeah. Do you want one? I love peppers. Well, we gotta go back. Yeah. There's, nothing, there's nothing better than fresh live food, you know. Well, you mind my COVID? You can break off. You can break off. You can break off a piece. Yeah, you guys are. So the great thing about about going to thank you so much, John. John was just he's like distributing fresh fresh stuff. So yeah. So the the, the nice thing about uh, also about getting to Africa is boy they're growing a lot of their own fresh food and you can get the coffee beans are right there too. And they have their coffee ceremonies and they roast the beans themselves. And, but what happened is that uh, with crazy Corona starting, I thought uh, I better hurry up and get there. I might not have time for my plan to sail and um, and row. I'm going to get a plane ticket. And the tickets were about half price. Instead of 1400 about $700 mid, around, the, around uh, mid-March. And so I think my flight was scheduled for March 21st, and I found a place to stay for $20 a night in the heart of um, the place where I was needing to go, Asmara, gorgeous town, village on crystal clear waters. And so that was it, one-way ticket. I was going. I wasn't planning to ever come back. And I um, got a little ding on my phone after I'd given up my apartment and I was just cleaning up and um, to get my full deposit back. I heard a little ding and it was a message from my host in Asmara saying that the first case of Corona had just happened and quarantine was starting the day of my flight. And in March, I had no idea what quarantine was going to look like there. And she was closing down her Airbnb too, $20 a night, available for the next three months. So my head spun. And I thought, whew, I just gave up my apartment. Well, <laughs> I guess I'll be staying in some hotels and hostels and B&Bs and Airbnbs until I can get to Africa. And so I spent the next eight months taking care of a lot of people, feeding lots of people, adopted a pregnant woman who was about to lose her housing. She was at five months pregnant. And she lived with me for her last trimester. And she's now offered me her baby. Jace, she asked what I would name a boy. I said Ace because Ace means community in Greek. And she named him Jace. Her name is Jessica. So now I just need to find a place for Jace and me. Um, I, I spun back into my mother's hometown of DC. I was in, I mean, of Sarasota. <laughs> I was in DC. Uh, where am I? Uh, it's almost cold enough to feel like DC. Hi, uh, my name's Alex. Uh, I work in New York and on uh, March 12th they sent us home. Um, I thought it was going to be a two week, you know, break from the office working from home. Um, I moved out of my apartment back into my you know, parents' house um, and nine months later I'm, I'm still here. Uh, uh, fortunate to have a job, um, but hopefully 2021 brings us better things. Hi, my name is Emily. I'm from Northeast Ohio, Akron, Ohio. This is my daughter Juliana. This is my son Giovanni. And in 2020, we call ourselves Team Egg. And 2020 Team Egg was born because this is the first year that we've been just a family of three. So it's been a hard year for sure in more ways than one. Um, so I'm a teacher and an overarching theme this year has been teaching online and um, teaching from home with little kids and being a single mom for the first time. So this year's been about resiliency and learning to do really hard, hard things. And after this, I don't know what could be hard. I'd like to say that, I mean, it has been hard. It has been hard to like go through the, this pandemic and to be stuck in your houses, not being able to meet other people, whereas like the main thing in people is social interaction. People can't live without social interaction. So, but there are good things that came out of it, which was you, can, you got like the personal connection, you could find, you could understand who you really are, and that, it's, it's been a great journey. And yeah, I would kind of 
I'd just like to add on to what she said. It's kind of hard not meeting people when you're usually so socially active in school. And going off with what um, she said, I think it's very difficult for us not to be able to meet people and it makes you realize like how much you take for granted in life and how you need to be more appreciative of these things. But I think overall we've been really making the best of it and I think we just need to work a little bit harder. This has made us realize a lot of new things. We've come together as a group more and I think this has just made our experience just much greater.